Hello, everyone. My name is Mike Perez. I am the project technical lead for the OpenStack Block Storage Project Extender. And uh, so today we're going to be looking at a little taste of what's coming in the Liberty release. So looking back on Kilo, uh, we have 45 volume drivers in total that is supported in Cinder. Uh, these all include with a continuous integration system. Uh, in particular with Cinder, we have made the requirement in the Kilo release. It's been about a, around a, quite a long time coming of a requirement that we've been working towards in which we want to have all volume drivers to be tested against the same test that we run against the reference implementation in OpenStack, which is LVM. So uh, we made the decision to, uh, you know, for example, with these CI systems, uh, all vendors would have to have a CI system in place for every single patch set that comes in for Cinder. We'd have to pull in that patch set, bring up an OpenStack environment with that patch, and actually test that against uh, their actual backend solution that's hooked up to uh, that OpenStack setup. And so, of course, this would be do done in the automated way with CIs, and it, you know, can be a lot of patches that comes in, but, uh, you know, we're dealing with the, you know, amount of traffic that is coming in for the different CIs. And so I'm happy to say that, you know, with the drivers, I can say that all 45 drivers have passed through these tests. And so I'm hoping that the amount of, uh, you know, that, that uh, these drivers themselves have been a lot more stable for operators in use. Um, along with that, though, we had some volume drivers, unfortunately, that did not meet the requirements in time. Uh, so as I mentioned, the community is very well committed with making sure that the volume drivers are tested. So we will continue to work with these vendors. Some of them have been added as well into the Liberty, back into with the Liberty release, and they can also be re-added at a later time in another release. So along with that, we have 75 blueprints done for Kilo, as well as 353 bug fixes done. And I'm happy to say with our release notes and items that we have listed there, there is documentation listed um, documentation links for each of the new features that we're providing. So I am very happy to say that documentation has also been improved. Um, next slide. So Liberty so far, uh, we have, we just tagged uh, for the milestone one release and uh, we have 19 new volume drivers, all with CI system. As I mentioned, this is a requirement for all new drivers as well as existing drivers to continue to stay in the Cinder ecosystem. Uh, along with that, we have 29 blueprints done, as well as 134 bug fixes done for the first milestone. Uh, next slide. So nested quotas, um, I'm basically just gonna go slide by slide of uh, some important features that I think are good for operators and end users to know. So nested quotas, we have hierarchy quotas. This is uh, working with, uh, in particular, with Keystone providing a hierarchy structure of being able to have projects and sub-projects and so on. We want to be able to provide the ability to have quotas within those different projects that are within different projects. So uh, it's kind of easy to just see this example that's on the slide of project A, which has a sub-project of B, and, sub and B has a sub-project of C. So A starts off with a hard limit of 100, allocates 50, which it provides to its subproject B. And so B has a hard limit of 50, and it's allocated to project C. And you may notice that project B, for example, has 20 used, and uh, C has used of 10. So that's taken into account for the use of its own subproject and B, but also B is using 10. What do these numbers represent exactly? I didn't mention that earlier. They represent gigabytes. So it could be represented as gigabytes as well as number of volumes, number of snapshots like we do today inside of Cinder. Um, definitely I recommend reading the full spec though if you wanna see uh, a bunch of different case scenarios, it's pretty well documented. Um, so happy to see that coming into Liberty. Uh, next slide. So force detach, um, this in particular um, is something that uh, comes up quite often, also came up in the operators meetup at, in Philly. Uh, I was there and this was one of, one of the few things, of, and I say unfortunately one of the few things 
uh, that came up uh, for sender feedback. And so it's the problem with my volume is stuck in an attaching state and I can't do anything about it except maybe update the database to set the volume back to an available state. Don't do that. Um, that's an, going to cause some sort of error prone issue and we would uh, actually prefer people not fussing with the database. So what does this provide us exactly is operators and end users can safely detach stuck volumes. How does it do this? Well, sender will go ahead and communicate to the volume driver that it wants to go ahead and put this volume into an available state, but it's currently stuck in a detaching state. So we'll leave it to the volume driver and sender to orchestrate uh, terminating the connection correctly. And then once that has been confirmed on the actual backend solution, then we can safely set the volume back to an available state. Next slide. And generic image caching. Um, so for your popular images, uh, we will begin the ability to actually cache these images. Um, so a problem that exists today inside of Cinder, um, not for all volume drivers, some volume drivers do some smart things, but um, you have your glance back store, which is storing images. And then you have your Cinder, uh, you know, backend solution that's hooked up. And you want to copy an image to a volume that you are creating on your backend solution side. So unfortunately that copies over the network and for big images that could be really slow. Um, it's also gonna cause network traffic and all these other things. Um, we wanna avoid that and we wanna make that a lot faster for image uh, volume creations that are done by images. So in order to do this, we will be able to cache the actual images that are popular in the actual backend solution itself. So then when a volume creation request comes in and it wants to go ahead and create a volume off of an image, instead we could do a clone, copy on write of that particular image and the volume driver can do whatever it does to be performant in this area and do the copy on write, reference that image and then create a new volume, it's pretty quick. So and the best thing about this is, as I mentioned, it's generic. It will be supported for all volume drivers to take advantage of. Next slide. So rolling upgrades part two. I mentioned part two because from Kilo and onwards, we allow schema upgrades to be independent of services. So essentially you can update your sender database and your sender services themselves can continue to work properly and you don't have to bring them all down at the same time of the schema upgrade. Um, so that's sort of like the first step and we were committed to making sure that we didn't create any sort of silos and coming up with a generic solution around this. Uh, we actually took this solution originally from Nova and then we made it into a generic library into Oslo for all OpenStack projects to take advantage of. Uh, it's called version objects and it allows uh, the ability of having this separate layer for uh, objects that could exist in your code. So, it essentially allows, allows this first step of the schema upgrades to be independent. Um, the second step though we have to deal with is RPC compatibility. Um, messages that are being sent from different uh, sender services, uh, messages that are in flight, as well as uh, the receiving uh, service needs to be able to handle upgrades that are happening as they're being rolled out. So this is proposing the idea that there will be a master version that Cinder will know about. So say for example, you're at version um, O and you want to upgrade to version P. So you can go ahead and tell the Cinder service that, okay, the master version right now is O, you can upgrade your services and, and slowly start rolling out the code updates to the different nodes to be at version P. And then once the code has all been rolled out to these different services, you can then tell Cinder, okay, go ahead and start sending messages as P and all the different services should start being able to receive those messages just fine. And it will also wait for all messages going in transit to be completed as well before it does this. So it allows us to avoid uh, different rolling upgrade pains. You can upgrade your Cinder services in any order you like. So, and of course, uh, 
There are a variety of other projects that we're uh, working on this particular solution with, uh, claim with the project heat. So um, we will also be making sure, just like we did with version objects, that this is something that is shared across OpenStack projects for everyone to take advantage of. Next slide. Capabilities. Uh, so with the Cinder client, um, just in today with, with Cinder, you have your backend solution and it provides a variety of different policies that you can set to Cinder. To Cinder, these policies are called volume types and you set different tiers with volume types and then they have uh, different policies attached to them, which we call extra specs. So the problem though is you as an operator uh, have a backend solution and they all have different things that they, all different names that they call their different policies. Um, unfortunately, it's not easy to create an interface and have all different vendors agree on different terminology, go figure. So the next best thing that we could do is actually be able to ask the backend, what are you cap currently capable of doing right now that I could set up a volume type um, so I could set up my policies. Um, and so, the, so this will actually allow the ability where you do not even need your vendor documentation uh, to actually know which different policies that you could set to a volume type. Instead, you can ask Cinder, give me the list of capabilities that I could set to a volume type, and then you can enter them in as you see them presented to you. Um, and what's neat about this is you don't need to know, have a documentation that is specific to a specific version of your backend solution. So, and also clients like Horizon can use this API to provide an interface which will allow things like, I don't know, maybe like drop down menus of setting up policies based on what it sees that the backend solution could do. And then you can fill in different values of what you want, say your uh, different QoS for max IOPS and min IOPS to be uh, for a particular tier that you're creating in a volume type. It's less error prone and I think people will Definitely like this improvement as clients roll it out. Next slide. Improving migrations. Uh, today, operators can migrate, and to be specific, this isn't live migrations of between volumes to different instances. We're talking about migration of volumes from a backend, a storage backend to a storage backend, or from within the same backend from one pool to another pool. That is something that Cinder already provides today, um, but unfortunately right now, um, there are some issues in particular with uh, knowing like what is the progress, for example, of this migration. Sometimes it could take a while. So you wanna be able to get that progress. Uh, we're gonna be able to provide the ability so you can pull in that progress. Um, we might have that ability as well inside of the Cinder client so that you can have that progress being pulled in and you will get you know, the periodic updates to know when that migration finishes. Along with that though, operators may wanna have the ability to force um, migrations. So taking the scenario, for example, there's an issue with uh, one of your backend solutions and you wanna to migrate to another backend solution that you have deployed in your data center and you wanna migrate the volumes over. So in order to do that, uh, we need to make sure that the volumes aren't being put into an attached state or being used by the end user. So you can start doing a forced migration, allow these volumes to be marked in a maintenance state, and then they will start being, uh, you know, migrated over to the other backend, and then they can't be used by the end user. And so this will kind of allow for those different uh, scenarios there. Uh, next slide. So um, these are some uh, smaller things that we're adding in that you know I thought maybe operators might like but may not notice behind the scene, but um, improvements with uh, Nova's use of Cinder's API and error handling. Uh, we're currently right now identifying a variety of issues that we have in terms of um, you know, the usage that Nova has with the Cinder's, uh, with Cinder client, for example, and we're identifying those different issues and we're rolling out a variety of bug fixes, um, uh, plans to uh, work with John on, uh, for Nova on uh, communication as well of the different issues that we need pushed along to kind of help in that area. Along with that though, there is also um, 
the plan is is for Python 3 ready for Center. So, so far, good progress being made there. There's a variety of tools that people are making to make the migration uh, quick for identifying different compatibility issues. So happy to see that coming along as well. Next slide. Ta-da, that's it. These are just variety of pictures of uh, the Cinder team. Uh, anyways, thank you. If you wanna uh, reach out to us, uh, we are on Freenode. Uh, our, our IRC channel is OpenStack Cinder, and uh, please reach out. We're kind of a nice group. All right, thanks.